In this video, I want to go over a bit in detail and exemplify why trilock is useful and where you can actually use it. First things first, let's let's think about a, of a simple problem. We have, uh, let's say we have a stove and that stove is being used by a lot of uh, chefs, right? And uh, that stove actually has fuel, <laughs> right? It has, let's say, gas. And that gas can deplete after every every cooking. So if that happens, well, the chefs can go home or something like that. Uh, so in our example, basically chefs, chefs are going to be equal to our Fred. Okay. The stove is really our mutex or our data, our shared data plus our mutex. So, and the cooking, uh, the cooking element is literally the routine that we're gonna execute here. Okay, so to start off, we're gonna have, of course, uh, a mutex, p thread mutex t, let's say <laughs> stove mutex, and then I'm gonna say here uh, int stove fuel. And this guy, let's say, starts with 100. And I created here the code for, well, creating and joining 10 threads. So I'm going to also create or initialize the mutex. Just like so. And now what I want to do is to create the actual program that's going to do this. Well, first things first, after everything, we're going to have to lock that mutex. So again, pthread mutex lock of our uh, stove mutex. And of course, unlock after we're done. And in between, we're simply going to do a stove fuel, not stove mutex, stove fuel minus equal, let's say a random number, let's say rand percent 20. Okay, that, that should be fine. Uh, okay, might as well call the S rand of time of null here. I think it needs time.h, time.h, okay, that's simple enough, we know about all this, and after, or like before it's done, let's say it takes a while to cook, let's say it takes, uh, let's do use sleep of 500 milliseconds. Use sleep takes in uh, microseconds, so that's why I have here 500,000. And before continuing, I think we should actually check whether we have enough uh, fuel. So what I'm going to do is say uh, fuel needed was that. And if stove fuel, stove fuel minus fuel needed is less than zero, then just print f no more fuel going home. That's it. Uh, and here, I guess I should print f fuel left percent d backslash n is the stove fuel. If it's done doing that, so like that, and else statement, and there we go. So if there's not enough fuel, it's just going to print out this, and if it is, then it's going to, of course, uh, subtract the fuel needed not another random number. Okay, and I guess we're gonna wait after after this is happening inside, let's say inside here. Okay, amazing, now let's try to execute this. If we take a look at what we get in the terminal is just very simple and straightforward. We just get a ever decreasing number that, okay, this time it didn't go down to zero, but if we, for example, change this to a percent 30, we should see it go down to zero and we should see that, of course, some threads just uh, didn't have enough fuel. Okay, that's, that's a very nice problem, but it's nothing really too crazy that, than what we've, de we've done before. But here comes the catch. What if we have more than one stove? Hmm. If we have more than one stove, then that's a lot more tricky than uh, than before. 
because, well, okay, let's suppose we have four stove fuels, right? We have here an array instead of just uh, one stove fuel. And let's say all of them start at 100, just like that. That also means we're gonna have to have either just one stove mutex or at least uh, a stove mutex for each stove. So I'm gonna say stove mutex of, few, of four here. I guess it's stove mutex C's at that point. And of course, if we change this, we're gonna have to initialize all of them. So I'm gonna have to change this so that it calls pthread mutex init for all four of them. And we have here an int i equals zero, i less than four, i plus plus, and then we have here a stove mutex of i. And the same thing here in the destroy part. So then destroy stove mutex of i. Okay, that's fine. Now, if we change here just everything to be stove mutex of zero and stove fuel of zero, that would just mean that uh, we're gonna use just one stove. Everybody's gonna use one stove and that's not what we want. And um, another thing we could do is to pass in as argument the stove that's going to be used, but that's predetermined. Can't we just um, let each, each uh, chef decide for itself? Like get take the first stove that is available every single time and if there's none just uh, wait for a bit. Can't we do that? Well, using the try lock uh, function we can actually do it. So what we can do is create a for loop, a for of int i equals zero over all of them, all of the mutexes, all of the stoves, of course, and say, instead of lock, we're gonna say try locks. So I'm gonna try to lock the stove mutex at uh, index i, right? So one of these mutexes is gonna be try to be locked and I'm gonna say here, if this is actually zero, so if what we did succeeded, we were able to get the lock, then amazing, we should uh, do this operation. And of course, we're gonna unlock it after we're done, and we're gonna use the stove fuel of I, right, in all the places. And if it did succeed, once it's not gonna try to cook again on the next stove okay so what i wanted to do is if it was able to lock a certain mutex if it was able to cook once uh it should terminate its execution so i'm gonna go ahead and say here break so i want to break out of the for loop so that it finishes its execution as you can see, in this situation, the first thread is gonna come along and, well, iterate through all the mutexes. It's gonna say stove mutex of zero. Is it locked? Of course it's not, so it's gonna probably lock it. And it's gonna enter the code. It's gonna do its thing. It's gonna unlock after it's done. And then it's gonna break out of the for loop. So it's, gonna, it's not gonna cook again, okay? And in the meantime, if, for example, the second chef comes along and tries to lock this uh, stove mutex of zero and says that oh no no the first thread is there the first chef is there and it's actually occupied it's actually like uh, working right now so you cannot do that well then it's going to iterate again to stove mutex of one and that one's going to be empty it's going to be able to put its uh, cooking pot on the stove and it's going to be able to cook and it's not going to be interrupted because it got the mutex, right? And uh, the third one is going to check the first and second one that's going to be like uh, occupied again and so on and so forth. Now oh, I miss in the initialization here, the I, my bad. So now if we try to launch this, you will notice that, well, only four threads were able to do some work while the others didn't actually print anything on the screen and didn't do anything else. That's because, well, the first four came along and locked this, um, these all four mutexes, and then the fifth one was like, I don't have any space in here, so he just uh, went home <laughs> and just finished execution. So we're gonna try to prevent that. It's gonna uh, try again after, let's say, half a second or something like that. To do that, what we can do is say if 
on the else branch here of this guy. So if it failed to get a lock and it's the last iteration, so if i is actually three, right? So we are on the last iteration and we should actually finish our execution. Uh, well, how about you just sleep, you sleep for, let's say, that is 300 milliseconds. And it's gonna sleep for that. And after it, it's done sleeping, it's gonna try again. And to make the, the loop try again, all I have to do is just say i equals zero again. So the for loop is gonna start again at zero in this, uh, in this little else uh, branch. And if I try to launch this, we should notice that all of the 10 chefs were able to cook. And actually we can say here, uh, print f no stove available yet, waiting. So now if I try to launch this, oh, and the backslash n would help. Yep, and as you can see, we got this a couple times, but it did wait and it did uh, after quite a few tries, some of them did get the spot in there and were able to actually cook something at the stove. So this is how you can use the try lock function. When you have multiple sort of shared memories or concepts, they don't even have to have actual memory, right? This is just a stove. I added the stove fuel myself, but we don't have to have it really. Um, but if you have it and it doesn't matter which one a thread chooses, but it needs to choose one and that, uh, in that situation, the try lock really helps, right? So if you have um, a point where you have multiple mutexes, they are all exactly the same. It's just there are multiple of them so that more threads can do things in parallel. Then uh, a try lock call makes sense because, well, without a try lock, you would just be waiting on that one probably predefined uh, mutex. And that wouldn't be uh, necessarily the most optimal way of doing things. And that's about it for this video. Um, I hope you got something out of it. If you do have any questions, leave them down in the comments below or on our Discord server. Uh, the source code is going to be found uh, at the link below to our website where you can uh, copy it, execute it, whatever uh, do to it. All right, take care.